Hey guys, welcome to the vlog. It is an all day vlog. It is Tuesday, March 7th. We are on our way to Ancaster, Ontario, where they make the Tim Hortons coffee, I guess. I'm not sure if it's the facility that makes the coffee or it's the testing facility. And uh, that's where they invent the new flavor of coffee that we'll be trying today. Um, it is like one degree out, so I've got the heated seats on. I forgot to show you upstairs, but uh, nothing's changed since uh, the guys left last week. And uh, so today they're coming to do the, some more renovations. They'll be taking out that side window, putting in a, uh, well, they're gonna take out the side window, leave the hole there to bring in all the drywall because drywall is like 48 inches wide by uh, eight feet long so they have to they need a bigger opening to get the drywall in so that's why we're getting a bigger window plus it'll be nicer for Megan to have a nice big window up there uh, so they're gonna make a hole in the side of our house bring all the drywall in put the brand new window in uh, I'm not sure if they're gonna try and put the other window on the other side of the, of the house today um, I can't remember if we left enough room for them to move around in but uh, I've got my garment on and uh, first stop is a Tim Hortons it'll be kind of nice to have a Tim Hortons before I go to Tim Hortons to try a new coffee so I can have something on my taste buds to compare it to but uh, yeah it's gonna be an all-day vlog hopefully uh, lots of fun lots of cool things that you guys have never seen I've never seen and uh, yeah, we're on our way. Of course, we're in the car. We got the radio. That means we might be singing. So sorry, John, and anybody else who doesn't appreciate my beautiful singing voice. It's all about having fun, people. You can dance for inspiration. Don't bring me down. Na 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 na. Come on, come on, come on. I'll tell you once more before I get up and go. Don't bring me down. One of the reasons I don't mind working at home. Traffic. Nice. All right, we finally reached the Tim Hortons pull off. It's an asshole station on, I don't think it's an on route. Doesn't matter, there's coffee here. Let's do it. Got my coffee, it's $1.90 at this location. Most other locations are $1.80 for a large double-double. Back onto the highway to the traffic jam. Just got off the phone with Paul We've been discussing our uh, the 200,000th subscriber video celebration, and uh, we're going to be doing it at the Tickle Toad. But we're debating on whether it's going to be Friday afternoon or Saturday. I'm kind of maybe pushing for Saturday at noon or 11:30 to noon kind of thing before maybe he gets like a little rush, lunch rush, and uh, we'll do it in the bar section of his of his restaurant. Uh, I'm hoping it's Saturday. I'll give you guys a heads up because if you want to come and meet and watch the 200,000 subscriber celebration video, you're more than welcome. Uh, it's, I think it's 300 Steels West. All you have to do is uh, Google the Tickled Toad Pub and Grill and uh, you'll be able to find the address there. If you want to do a meetup, take pictures, have fun, make your own video, whatever you want to do. Uh, it would be awesome if we could get a whole bunch of people down there. If not, it'll just be a bunch of bar people getting drunk. <laughs> uh, it is a restaurant, so, you know, it's not just a bar, it's not just for adults. So uh, kids are allowed there and all that kind of stuff too. Uh, and then we'll be doing, I'm, I'm gonna attempt to either Carolina Reapers or uh, two scorpions or one of each for to celebrate 200,000 subscribers. I'm gonna try and do two peppers uh, if possible. 
Uh, they are dried, unfortunately. They're not fresh peppers, but they're still flipping hot. And uh, it'll be my first time ever doing a Reaper or a Scorpion. So again, I invite you down. Keep in touch. Keep, <clears throat> my voice is cracking, what the hell? Uh, keep your eye on the social medias because I'll be posting if there's a specific time or a specific day. At this moment, I'm, I'm thinking Saturday would be best because then there's no pressure and people, you know, have time to get down there if they want to actually come down and meet. Uh, and greet at the same time as watch uh, me burn my mouth out. All right, guys, cool. So I'm right now on the uh, QEW heading towards Hamilton. I gotta like pick up the speed. It was really, really tough getting through Toronto. Uh, it slowed me down a lot. And it said, says at this point in time, at this speed, I'm gonna get there at uh, just after 10. I'm supposed to be there before 10, but anyway. Uh oh, we got some drama happening. Uh, the gas indicator came on. I am almost empty, so I gotta pull off the highway, grab some gas, and uh, get back on the highway and step on it. All right, we're gassing here up at Trafalgar Road and the QEW. This is a petrol can. Uh, it's a dollar four point nine per liter. Uh, yeah, I gotta gas up real quick and get back on that highway, man, because I'm gonna be late. I hate being late. I am at Maidstone Coffee. I hope I'm going in the right door. It doesn't say special. All you smell is coffee. We got a wash up before we go into the facility. This is Maidstone and uh, this is going to be cool. Alright, so here we we're go. Start off the very back, the beginning of Here we go, people. So what do you think so far, Corrado? So far it smells like coffee and it's very loud. Yes. Yeah. We're good. I didn't know coffee could be so loud. Wow. Cool. This would be the non-processed green side. Oh, okay. And then we have the processed finished goods side on the other side of the wall. Nice. And this is all the stuff from Colombia right now? Uh, it's from different parts of the of the world. Okay. Um, could be Colombia, Guatemala, Brazil. Um, it can be up to six different green types that we use. So this represents about a week's worth, week and a half worth of coffee. Um, this whole thing? Yeah. So we yeah, we can ask for some coffee. Now we supply, uh, we do two different streams. We uh, roast and grind our own process, which we do for the restaurants in, in Tim Hortons, so all the pots of coffee. And we also do the blending for all the retail product. So we blend it in green, 2,000 pounds of super sacks, and that goes to the club and Mother Parkers. And they do all the cans and the, the bags for us. Now we do it all ourselves internally. We'll blend it and keep the recipe to ourselves. We send it to them for their roasting and the processing side. What you're seeing right here behind us is that we just had some, I guess it's Guatemala's just came in. So he'll stage it all out and then he'll take stabbings out. You can see some of the holes here. So he'll stab it and take some, some of the coffee beans. And we make up a composite sample, we call that. We'll take it up the front and we'll shake it all up so that we got a representation of all the coffee that we brought in. It, and then we do a, a cupping on it just to make sure that it's the quality we're looking for. Now is that one per skin or one per bag? One stabbing? Uh, one stabbing for random. Yeah, you can do a couple on each one, depends. And what you're trying to find out is if there's any kind of uh, defect in it. Some coffee picks up a lot of flavors. So if a tractor trader had a hole in the trailer uh, and the exhaust was going in, you pick up the taste of diesel, we reject it. So once all the coffee, once it's here uh, and we accept it, what we'll do is we barcode it, and on the barcode we show uh, the contract cargo container, so we can do all the traceability of that of that green. And because it's barcoded, that actually is at the very beginning of our process. We'll barcode it and scan it into our system. So when you're at the Tim Horton store, and say there was a customer complaint of some sort. 
uh, they can take that pouch, we put the date code and the timestamp on it, on the machine. I can take that and go all the way back to here. So I can go all the way back to the individual components for traceability. So I can go either green up or finish goods down. Um, and it's very quick. Um, all of our products, all of our burlap bags, any kind of waste materials recyclable. I found sources for everything. So we're trying, we're, we're, we're looking at before the end of this year to be zero waste, a zero waste plant. Very because nice. we're Tim Hortons, we're high icon, we want to make sure that we get, like nothing goes to the landfill sites. Even our film, I found a supplier that would take that and make plastic out of it. Film is really hard to find because it's got metal in it. But we, uh, as we're starting up, we, we create waste. We're uh, cubing that all up and sending it to a place you where mean, they, You mean the wrap, that, that plastic? Uh, this stuff goes recycled directly oh. back to a plastics company. So how far are you away from being zero, zero waste? Uh, it'll be within the next, I'd say the next month. Don't know that recipe. We 
put it in this, it's called a cooling cart. The cooling cart will percolate air through it, almost like the wicking when you come out of the beach. So if you get really chilled and you don't hot it, you cool those beans down within about 20 seconds. So it's 400 some odd degrees, you cool it down to uh, cooler in your body in about 20, 30 seconds. Then we suck it up and we put it into what's called tempering bin. So the outside of the bean, or the bean is still moist, and the inside of the bean is really hard uh, and dry. So if I was to grind it, it you get big chunks, and then when it hit the middle, it's turning into dust. So now we have to let it sit for a couple hours for that moisture to reach equilibrium to go throughout that whole bean. So we can probably go in the control room, but uh, yeah, it then it goes around the piece of wood that will put the side seals on it. So now you've got basically a pouch, a continuous pouch. Uh, we'll put a little tear notch, and then you can see over there that little light dancing over there. We use a laser to put on the uh, gate pole and the time stamp. Then it goes into a filling chamber. The filling, the filling chamber is nitrogen flush, so there's no oxygen in there. We have two servo motors that will dump the coffee onto it. Fill the pouch to two and a half ounces. Servo motor. Servos will dump the coffee into these little funnels. Put two and a half ounces in it. Then we superheat nitrogen and we just slightly melt the uh, film on the top surface. Close for a crimp. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and that's about it. Like our sensory, we try to do it in silence. Um, unless you're going to gustating, you'd be doing some slurping and spitting. Um, but what we mean by that is just we don't talk when we're doing cuppings. Because mm -hmm. anytime you have a conversation and you go, oh, I don't really like that, uh, psychologically, in your, in your mind, you're going to think, oh, there's something wrong with that cough. And you're going to cough and go, oh, I don't like it either. So we just do. Uh, cuppings in, in silence. So you do your cupping, you keep your comments to yourself until we're done. You write down what you find and then we uh, discuss that afterwards. Got, we've got a really, we think this is going to be a lot of fun for you folks because there's, uh, we've got coffee from all over the world uh, for you guys to try. Have you guys done coffee tasting before? No. Never. Never? Okay. Uh, wine tasting? No. Yes. Mm. 
-hmm. beer drinking, wine tasting, <laughs> beer tasting, beer chugging. Yeah. God, beer chugging. Yeah. So we got a lot in common. Yeah, that's right. yeah. On this side, this is all the raw material, uh, procurement and raw material quality. So in here, the uh, the team, each team member would cup approximately 75,000 cups a year. And it, that, that really starts from a sample, I think on the back wall, you may have been looking on the back wall over there. Those are all samples that have just arrived from the producing countries where we source from. Oh, okay. But typically what happens is we get a pre-shipment sample and that pre-shipment sample is a, um, it, it's a lot of coffee that a vendor has sold us that meets the Tim Hortons specification. So it could be it could be a Colombian coffee, a Guatemalan coffee. We get the pre-shipment sample. We uh, we grade it uh, in terms of the green bean. We then roast it up in our little sample roasters over here. Then we we go through a cupping uh, exercise, which we're going to do here. Uh, and what typically what what most companies do and. This is traded, bought, sold, traded the same way around the world. It doesn't matter what country you're in, what quality lab you're in, we all buy, trade, taste coffee the same way. So we roast it up, there's one, one gram to one ounce, so our bowl size here is seven ounces, so we put seven grams of coffee. Um, once we approve that sample, it gets then put on a vessel, and typically every three weeks or it takes for coffee from Latin America to arrive in either the port of New Jersey uh, or into the uh, warehouse, the warehouse facility in Etobicoke, Ontario. Once that sample arrives, we get a we get a third sample, we get a second sample that we cup against the original shipment sample. We compare the two results. If it doesn't taste like the original sample, we reject it. If we take it and it gets approved, it goes into our inventory. And we have a third check at all those bags that you saw in the back warehouse. That's the third check we would do. So we draw, as the, we draw samples. We've got uh, the staff testing, as Lyle calls it, um, and compare that against the arrival sample. If it if it meets our specification, then it gets approved for for production. So we're we're good to go. We can pour, guys. Uh, the other, so what we have here is uh, we, we're going to cup a, a Brazil coffee. Brazil is the single most important producing country in the world. It represents anywhere from 30 to 40 percent of world production. We've got a Colombian coffee, which is the uh, has the highest production of washed arabica. So you can have a natural or a washed arabica coffee. We're cupping a Guatemalan coffee, which we believe is one of the top three three countries in the world in terms of uh, uh, quality. We've got an Indonesian coffee um, from, uh, th this particular coffee is very unique in, in its taste. It's got a heavy cedar or earthy type taste to it. The other commercially traded coffee is called a Robusta. It's generally used in, in commercial grade, uh, private label, low end, um, or less expensive coffee. So we thought we thought that you uh, would give me an education on robust. We're certainly not using any for the Tim Hortons blend, but it, it's important in terms of the, the world and coffee's production. <coughs> the other, the, what we're gonna, f uh, is it, are we doing the three? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, the, the final part of the cupping, or it's actually not gonna be final because we've got everything set up here, is the Three Peaks Colombian that we just launched. In uh, five test markets, Haley. Um, it's our first single origin coffee. Uh, we're really, really excited about the Three Peaks. It, it comes from a region called Calca, Colombia. And Calca is quite famous for its climate as well as the, the base of the Andean Mountains form in Calca, at the bottom of Calca, and it, and it moves up. Uh, the other unique part of about, about the Calca production is in, in another state next door called Wheela, you have snow top mountains and it brings that cool air into the Calca microclimate and the micro regions and within, uh, within that area. It, what, what happens is because that cool air is there, it slows the maturation down hmm. and it takes longer for the bean to develop and thereby absorbing all the sugars and the sweetness. So you get a really, really rich, unique character from, from that particular region. So we're going to taste that Kelka coffee against the original in the Tim Hortons Dark. It's, it's 
so fresh with the CO2, it forms this crust that, that when, we, when we walk you through this, what we're going to do is break that crust and this blast of aroma is going to come off the coffee. If it wasn't fresh, you would have, you would have no crust and the coffee would be stale. Yeah, there's plenty of seats here, so... We break the uh, crust while they break and then we inhale the aroma. So at this point, uh, if coffee is clean, so that's mean no defect. So if we get something uh, off note, so the coffee must be defective. So what we do, uh, is coffee is hard, don't put your nose into the cup. So it <laughs> don't happens. happen. Yeah. So <laughs> it happens. In a blister. Yeah. <laughs> so what you do, uh, bring your nose close to the cup, and then uh, step coffee grounds, and then inhale the aroma. So the first one is a Brazil. Okay. It's it's got a soft neutral smell to it. it, it um, it's got a hint of a uh, a bit of a peanutty, a, po a, a positive peanutty note to it. You can have with some coffees where where you get peanutty where when it's that's when it's a defect. But this has a bit of a peanutty note to it that's positive. The second coffee is a Colombian coffee. So this this cup here. Yep. Oh, moving up. Yep, moving up. Okay. Let's see. It's very. It, it it's got a completely different smell. It's very distinct. Mm -hmm. um, it's got a very distinct fruit or a wine note to it. That's what it is like fruit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Trying to place it. Definitely has a, it's got a pleasant fruit note. Let me go back to this one. Wow. Totally different. The third one, we're going to come down now. This is a strictly hard being Guatemalan. Let's get that up. It went from fruit in Colombia, mm -hmm. the Guatemalan, you're going to, you're going to, well, it should have a nut or a spice smell to it. Um, I cut this one earlier. I found it had a very spicy, spicy aroma. The fourth one, Indonesian. There's the, the best way to describe an Indonesian, it's certainly bold. You can really get the boldness from it. Um, in terms of the aroma note, uh, it can you can get cedar, you can get mushroom, you can get earth. Those are the three different uh, aromas. I find this one to be a little cedar, earthy aroma to it. The fifth one is your Robusta. It, it, it's got a, it smells like burnt rubber. Yeah. <laughs> this is a selling really point. <laughs> Does it smell like burnt rubber or it tastes like it, burnt rubber? Well, it, yeah. it smells like the coffee it, it, it Both. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Both. I thought we were supposed to do this in silence. And that's this one? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There goes right here. Okay, let's do burnt rubber. That's the best one. No. Yes, right. <laughs> oh, it does. Yeah. Oh, it does. Mm. <laughs> yeah. That's strange. And mm -hmm. um, this is one of the better mm. Robusta coffees. This is a wash Robusta, is that right, Jim? This is a washed. Yeah. The top three yeah. coffees you have, the one on your left is the original Tim Hortons blend. Mm -hmm. We have the Three Peaks Kelka Colombian coffee and the dark roast. Going in for the Tim Hortons. That smells familiar. <laughs> That's what my car smells like. <laughs> oh. Should we skip the middle one and go to the dark roast? No, I would. No, I would go to the. Do you want to order? That's funny. I, so that smells like the best so far out of all of them. <laughs> Which one? The, Tim Hortons yeah. regular. That's a hilarious. The one we love, right? That's right. The one where You've programmed me well. <laughs> going, going for the three blend. Wow. So different. Oh, wow. Yeah, surprisingly different. All three have a have a unique uh, 
smell. Yep, that's amazing. And then dark roast. You've done dark roast. I haven't even tried the dark roast yet. I'm like so far behind. <laughs> I was drinking it's my Lista. favorite one so far. Is it really? Oh, yeah. I I'll have to. I don't drink the original but... anymore. Really? I can't, I can't go back. But is it a stronger coffee? You gotta watch your uh, sleeve here. Because oh. I'm not into sleeve. strong coffee. <laughs> dark roast smells good. <laughs> yeah, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. It is good. I need to do another test Thanks, of this sir. one. Mess. Yeah, they all smell good. Compared Certified to Cupper now. <laughs> Certified <laughs> Cupper. Nice. What you can see in this tray here is the three different colors. You have the Tim's Original. We, um, we have that as a light medium roast. Right. With the Three Peaks coffee, we, went, we had to go to a full medium roast to bring out and maximize the flavor and demean. Right. And then, of course, we have our, of our dark, we have our dark roast on the end there. I see. Um, so it's almost like a cross. Not pollination. quite. No. Well, it's the one thing that's um, it, with, with green coffee or with coffee in general, you have to maximize the bean through the roasting process. You can take coffee too far, where it's bitter and burnt. Um, you can roast it too light, where you haven't brought out the flavor enough. So each individual origin and grades within producing countries, you have to roast it slightly different to bring out the flavor. So in the case of the Three Peaks, this was the best roast color to bring out that caramel uh, fullness in, in the smoothness in the coffee. The dark roast um, certainly has been a home run for us. No doubt we, we've got not only our Tim Horton customers liking the dark roast, but but as a whole within within the industry, with with any demographic sector, we're seeing a lot of consumers gravitate to uh, dark roast. And we're taking share from the competition. It, it we think we hit we hit a home run with this in terms of the roast profile. It's not too polarizing, it's not too dark, but yet it brings out the full smoothness that you would that you would expect out of a dark roast. Mm -hmm. It's the one thing about coffee, you can actually roast it too dark and it's still a weak cupping coffee. Yeah. So if you don't have the right blend, you don't have the right roast profile, um, you won't you won't develop a good blend or a good uh, bold bold coffee in this case. If you think why you are tasting like this, uh, because of the uh, taste buds. When you drink coffee, it's going to hit gradually your tongue. I mean, part of the tongue. So when you're uh, slurping, um, it's going to spray coffee all around your tongue at once. At the tip of your tongue, you get sweetness. Here, you get salt. Further back, you get sour, and all the way back in the middle, you get the uh, bitterness. And so when you slurp, we're going to make loud noise, and um, coffee is going to hit all part of your tongue. So that's the uh, basic of this. Yeah, the other part of slurping is to when you draw that oxygen in, you're 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 bringing out the aroma in the coffee. If you were to just sip it and drink it quickly you wouldn't actually bring out the aroma. So what we what we do here is we swish it around. In Jay's point, you hit your sweet, salt, sour, bitter, plus you're bringing out the aroma characters in the coffee. You, you plug your nose and taste something, it, it, it's flat. Yeah. So that's why you're, you're swishing it around. Don't be shy. <laughs> I can't wait. I'm not allowed to spit at home, so. <laughs> this is a very, very nice. soft, fine. It tastes like tea. It's, this one. it's got a very mild, mellow mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. character. You, you do get a nice body from the coffee. It's got a bit of a nuttiness to the background, but it, it, it's soft, fine, and neutral is, is how, we would, how we would describe this. When you get into the, the next one is the Colombian. Um, our, our Colombian, we would describe it as having a medium, a medium body. Uh, you get the sweet up front. You definitely get a, you get a medium to good acidity in the background, yeah. and it's got that citrus fruit that jumps out. The Guatemalan sample. Hmm. 
very spicy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's got a fuller body. Mm. This is uh, what Thanks, we call a strictly, strictly hard bean Guatemalan coffee from the Oriente, which is the eastern part of the, uh, the country. Really sweet. You get a brightness, the aroma, you get a full aroma, spicy. That's your Sumatra. Mm. Do you like the Sumatra? It's nice. It's a bold, earthy, mm. full, heavy, heavy coffee. Before we go on to the, the robust dash, I want you to come back to the, to the ground hour. Which is that one? the one number four. three. We've cupped something that's very bold and heavy. When you go back to the uh, a Guatemalan coffee or a Colombian coffee, you really sense how delicate it is and how different the uh, the sweetness and the acidity mm. level is. Yeah, it really stands out. It really stands mm. out. Mm -hmm. The last one is your Robusta. Fortunately, the rubber. The rubber. Yeah. Good old cup of Maxwell House. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I feel yeah. like I'm at mom's. Yeah. Wow. Mm. You can really get some nice robusta used in espresso based drinks. Okay. You, you see it a lot in Europe. Here in North America, we tend to use different coffees for, for espresso, but you, in small quantities, you can really get some nice, nice robusta. This, this is not a very. Mm -hmm. Nice coffee. So we're going to jump into the, the three Tim Horton blends. Um, the original we'll cup first. We'll go into the new Three Peaks limited time offer coffee, and then we'll finish off with the dark. How would you guys describe the Tims? A little taste of heaven. Mm. <laughs> um, Not as strong. A hell of a lot different than that robust though. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. Um, what you get, what jumped out at me on this particular sample here is that you, you really get this creaminess. Yeah. Creamy, creamy mouthfeel. Um, you get delicate sweetness up front. You certainly have the acidity that's pulling from the back. Yeah. And you can finish with a, what I'm describing as a, a caramel or a hazelnut finish to mm -hmm. to the coffee in the background you get that aroma releasing one more just a, a bit better than this one do I, am I tasting that right? The Three Peaks is a fuller, fuller yeah. coffee. Mm -hmm. um, you know, with, 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 with our first, we, we've had such a great success with, with the dark roast coffee. There, yeah. um, we're, we're finding our guests; they're, they're looking for a little more adventure. And right. They've told us that they've given us permission, right. and a single origin can offer some very unique and distinct tastes. And we think with this. Uh, Kelka coffee. And there's a lot of Kel coffee in Kelka, Colombia, but in this particular area that we've focused on and the suppliers that we've used to develop it, it's certainly unique and it's very different than, than the original and the dark roast. Okay. What I would encourage you to do is to, once you've tried the dark, mm -hmm. gotcha. and, and, and it is, it is, it's delivering on that smooth, full, rich flavor as we're describing it, when you go back. What really jumps out here is the sweetness, the acidity, and definitely caramel notes. When you get to the, when you go from the Colombian to the original blend, the or original blend is a little more delicate and a little more complex. There's a lot more flavor going on, uh, but it has a it has a slightly lighter, uh, lighter body or a lot lighter feel to it. So w once you've gone through all three, go back and you'll you'll be able to really see the differences. Thanks, Kevin, for the, the cupping. It was awesome. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome.
All right, guys, so that ends my tour of the Maidstone plant that makes all the coffee for the Tim Hortons restaurants. Uh, that was also my first cupping ever. It was very cool. Never thought I'd ever do that. Uh, as a treat, they gave us a brand new coffee maker, another big tin of regular coffee, uh, press release, a dark roast is in there as well. I'm not sure. I haven't pulled everything out of the bag yet, but I'll show you when I get home. So that ends my tour of the Tim Hortons plant here, and uh, thanks for coming along. It's 6.30 at night and the guys just left and they did all the, they took the window out like I told you and, and did the drywalling, almost all of it. He said he'll be finished the drywall tomorrow. And uh, it's starting to get dead sound in here now, which is good, but the window's looking good. There's our window. That's what the room looks like now. It's getting a little tight on the head space and right where I'm standing is I'm have to like tip over a little bit. But uh, just a few more pieces and it's all done. And we figured that window will come in super handy when we got to move Megan's bed up here because it will not fit up the pull down staircase so there you go guys it's getting getting closer and closer to being done and they did all the taping that's funny because when I did what I did originally um, I just staple gunned everything I guess after you staple gun everything you got to go over all the creases with tape just to make sure there's no air leakage and stuff like that uh, <clears throat> But I'm glad that uh, Carol came up with the idea of putting two more plugs in uh, just in case Megan has a table here with a lamp on it or over there. Uh, when I did it, there was only the two over there, which wasn't going to be good enough. So there you go, guys. A little update on the upstairs. All right, guys, it's time for happy birthday shout outs. Uh, it is April 7th, Tuesday, April 7th, and it's Michael Wood's birthday. Happy birthday, buddy. Just saw Mike on the weekend at the family gathering. Uh, Sam W, Chris T, Dylan H, and Anthony N. Happy birthday, everybody. Hope you had a really good day. Uh, hope you like being part of the, the Tim Hortons um, cupping and uh, tour. So talk to you guys later. Have a great day.